This is a $129 interface, and this is a $999 interface. And in this video, we're gonna find out whether the Apollo is 10 times worth the money, and most importantly, we're gonna help you decide which of these interfaces you should consider for your home studio. Starting with the Evo 4, in the box, you'll get the interface and the USB-C to USB-A cable. If you're a PC user, this should be fine. However, if you're a Mac user like myself, you will need to buy an adapter or a USB-C to USB-C cable separately. Going over the specs, on the front it has one headphone output and one input for your guitar and bass. On the back you can connect up to two XLR or instrument cables and one pair of studio monitors. On top of the interface it has one knob to control your volume and gain levels, as well as your mixer and monitor selectors, a 48 volt switch to power on condenser microphones, two channel selectors, and a smart gain control which is by far the biggest selling point of this interface. All you have to do is plug your microphone or your instrument into the EVO 4, then press the smart gain control, and as you start to play, talk, or sing, the interface is going to set all the levels for you. It's going to ensure that the audio isn't too loud or clipping, at the same time it's not going to be too quiet, it's going to be set just right. This way you can get started recording in no time. This interface also comes included with the EVO controller software, which will allow you to monitor all all the levels through your computer and make any adjustments to the interface. Moving on to the Apollo Twin, this interface comes in two versions, the dual core which is $999 and the quad core for $1499. The number of cores has to do with how many plugins you can run on the interface, but I'll talk more about that later in the video. In the box, you're going to get the interface as well as a power supply, but something you should know is that the Apollo can only be connected with a Thunderbolt cable and unfortunately it does not come included with the interface, so that will be an additional cost. Going over the specs, on the front it has one headphone output and one input for your guitar and bass. On the back, you can connect up to two XLR or instrument cables, as well as two pair of studio monitors, or one pair and then two additional headphones. And it also has an optical in, which will allow you to expand the number of channels of this interface. Looking top down, it has one knob to control your volume and gain levels. On the left, it has LED indicators for channels 1 and 2, and you can select those by clicking on the preamp button. And once you're in that mode, at the bottom of the interface, it will give you different functions, like the high pass filter to roll off the low end of your recordings, a 48 volt switch to power on condenser microphones, a pad switch which will allow you to record really loud audio sources, a polarity switch in case you're having phasing issues, and a link button which will link both channels 1 and 2 together. On the right side, it has LED indicators for both your headphones and your monitors, and those can be selected by clicking on the monitor button. And once you're in that mode, the functions on the bottom of the interface will change. It gives you a talkback feature, which will allow you to talk with the artist in case they're in another room recording. They will be able to hear you through their headphones. Dim, which will decrease the volume output of your monitors. Mono, which will change your stereo mix into a mono mix, and a mute button. So you're probably asking yourself, why is the Apollo so so expensive. In order to answer that question, we have to talk about Universal Audio, which is the company that makes the Apollo Twin. They are known to make the best emulations of vintage and analog gear in the world. They created these plugins that sound near identical to vintage preamps, compressors, EQs, and many other effects, and made those sounds available to the public for a fraction of the price through the Apollo. And just to give you an idea, if you were to go out and buy the actual hardware for some of the plugins that come included within Apollo, like the 610B preamp, an LA-2A compressor, a Pultec EQ, and even a Marshall Plexi, that would cost you tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, but now you have access to these sounds for a fraction of the price. But what really makes the Apollo different than most other interfaces is the fact that it's DSP powered. This means it can run all of the plugins that I just mentioned in real time with no latency and without putting any strain whatsoever in your computer. And like we mentioned earlier in the video, the number of cores in an Apollo will determine how many plugins you can run, so the more cores, the more effects you can add to your chain. But in order to take advantage of the DSP power, you will need to download the console app from Universal Audio's official website, and this is what it looks like. On the left side, it has your channel strip where you're going to insert all of your effects. And a cool thing about this software is that on the right side, it gives you two recording modes. UAD record 
record, which means you'll be able to hear the plugins in real time and they will be printed into your DAW. This is a great feature, especially if you know that the sound you're listening to will be the final product. If you want to save some time in post-production, then go with this mode. However, the mode that I prefer to record in is UAD monitoring. This mode allows me to still hear the plugins in real time with no latency, but they don't actually get printed into my DAW. The biggest benefit of this method is if I need to make changes after the fact, you will give me the flexibility to do so in post-production. But moving on, let's do some audio tests so you can hear what the built-in preamps sound like on both interfaces. You're listening to a Rode NT1, which is a very popular home studio mic, being connected straight into the EVO 4, and this is what kind of sound quality you can expect out of this interface. Now you're listening to the Rode NT1, but this time it's being connected straight into the Apollo interface without any post-processing, and this is what the built-in preamps sound like. Now you're listening to the Apollo Twin and the Universal Audio plugins, and my vocal chain consists of the 610B preamp, an 1176 compressor, an LA-2A compressor, and a Pultec EQ. overall thoughts and who would I recommend each interface to. Before I share them with you, let me know in the comments, could you hear 10 times worth of a sound difference? And also, if you enjoyed this type of content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. So for starters, I just gotta say that I got great results with both interfaces. And whether you're a musician, content creator, podcaster, or voiceover artist, you can still get professional work done with both. With that being said, I do think that each interface shines in their own way and each has their own target audience. So I would recommend the Evo 4 to anyone who's looking to get started in recording. If you're a beginner and you're in the process of building your first home studio, I think that this is going to be the perfect choice because one, it's inexpensive. It also has clean sounding preamps, especially at this price point. Not to mention it's very small and compact, which makes it very easy to travel with. And let's not forget the best feature is the small smart gain control, which just makes the recording process extremely easy. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling creative and I just need to get the work done, I don't want to be doing a lot of testing. I just want to be able to plug and record, and I think that this is where this interface really excels. Moving on to the Apollo Twin, I would recommend this interface for those of you who have experience under your belt. If you've owned other interfaces in the past and you feel like it's time to level up the production quality of your recordings, also you're a big fan of Universal Audio plugins, but you don't want to sign up for their Spark subscription. You would much rather do a one-time payment and then own those plugins for life. In addition to that, you think you're going to get a lot of value out of the DSP power and the ability to run all of the plugins in real time with zero latency, then in my humble opinion, I still think that the Apollo is a great investment. But to answer the original question in the video, do I think the Apollo is 10 times worth the money? When we talk about the pro features, the pre amps, and most importantly, the plugins that come included within Apollo, then in my opinion, yes, I do think it's 10 times worth the money. With that being said though, do I think it automatically sounds 10 times better than the Evil? That's questionable. And the reason that I say that is because for the average listener, I don't think that they will be able to tell, you know, 10 times worth of a difference in the recordings. Yes, the preamps sound much cleaner, and once you add the Universal Audio plugins, there's a bigger gap, but I don't think it necessarily means that it sounds 10 times better, if that makes sense. If you want to buy one of these interfaces, the links are down in the description below. But if you're still looking for an interface, maybe somewhere in the middle between these two, then make sure to click on this video so you can watch my Audient ID24 review, which in my opinion is the best value interface for under $400.